typing at the same time as talking and something else as I talk, I'll write it something else again without. I'm a bit of a geek. I love computers, new software, new plugins, and just anything that makes my life easier when using technology. The NVIDIA RTX voice plugin is by far the coolest piece of software I've ever used. It blows my mind, seriously. It's gonna blow your mind too, I promise. Keep watching. It is completely free, but you do need to have an NVIDIA RTX or GTX graphics card for it to work. If you don't know whether or not you have this graphics card, then uh, let me show you how you can find out on both Windows and on a Mac. Let's check it out. On Windows, to find out what graphics card or cards you have, you're going to go to the Start menu or press the Windows key on your keyboard, and you're just going to type Device Manager. Let's click that you'll see a list of all these things. You're just going to look for display adapters and click the drop down arrow. And there you go. I have an integrated graphics card, which most laptops uh, and computers already have. And then I have what's known as a dedicated graphics card, which is the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050. On a Mac, click the finder and click about this Mac. You should see your graphics card in the overview, or you can click displays for more information. All right, now let me show you how to get RTX Voice up and running on your computer. It's super easy, I promise. Then after that, we'll do some tests to see if it actually works. Let's set it up first. Okay, here we are. So the very first thing we're gonna do is just look up RTX Voice on Google. And the very first link, make sure it's nvidia.com. I'll put this link in the description. It takes you to the NVIDIA RTX Voice setup guide. So I do recommend reading through this just so you get an idea of uh, what it is, where it comes from, where it works, uh, and also how to um, download and install it. Now, it says that you need to have an NVIDIA GeForce RTX or Quadro RTX graphics card. Now, I don't have an RTX graphics card. I have a GTX one, but it still works. I'll show you how to get it working with a GTX. So it works on all of these things, OBS Studio, Streamlabs, um, XSplit, Broadcaster, Gamecaster, Twitch Studio, Discord, Chrome, Battle net chat, WebEx, Skype, Zoom, Slack, Steam chat, everything. It basically acts as a microphone. So let's follow the setup guide. We'll download the app. Okay, it finished downloading. So I'm just gonna click it. Now the installer is opening. Let's minimize Chrome. NVIDIA RTX voice application is not supported on your existing GPU. An RTX enabled GPU is needed for this application to run. If you have a GTX, you will get this error message and it's fine. You do need to try the install and you need it to fail to move on to the next step. So if you have an RTX, this will just work and you can kind of skip what I'm about to say. But for those of you with a GTX, we need to do an extra step. So what we need to do is we need to close this installer now and let's open Chrome. With a little bit of Googling, I managed to find out how exactly to get the RTX voice working on my GTX. And basically I just followed this guide. I will link this in the description of the video, so make sure you look down below. One of the first things you need to do is make sure that you have the latest driver for your graphics card. In order to find the latest driver, all I'm going to do is go to Windows and search for the GeForce Experience app, and we'll just open that. You want to go over to Drivers, and you want to click Check for Updates. It says down here at the bottom, you have the latest GeForce game ready driver. So I'm good to go. I can close this. Let's go back to our guide. So the first step tells us to download the installer for RTX Voice, which we already did, and then run the installer and get an error message. And we already did those three steps. The next step is to launch Windows Explorer and navigate to the C drive, a folder called temp, and then a folder called NVRTX Voice. So let's open my computer. 
then we want to locate the C drive. So just double click. And in the C drive, we want to find a folder called temp. So we'll double click that. And here's the NVRTX voice folder. Let's double click that. And here we are. And now it says to open the NVAFX folder. Let's open that step by step, nice and easy. And open the RTX voice.nvi with a text editor. Now, this next part might be a little bit tricky. It's asking us to open the file RTX voice.nvi. And this is the NVI file here, RTX voice with a text editor. Now, I actually tried to do this and it didn't work, but I think there's a workaround. So we're just going to right click and click open with and open it with a notepad. And it asks us to delete a section of code from the file, constraints, property, all of this section. So constraints to constraints. And that's just here. Constraints to constraints. We delete that and we save this. And we want to just save it in the same folder, right? It says it already exists. Do you want to replace it? We click yes. And now I get this error message where it says, I don't have permission to do that. So what I'm going to do is this didn't change. I can't save it. So don't save, close it. So I'm actually going to grab this and move it to the desktop and then continue. Okay. I found it. Here it is on the desktop. So uh, what I'm going to do is try and edit it now. So we'll double click it and we'll remove the constraints line and then we'll save it. So file save, and then we'll just drag and drop it back in that folder. And it should let us do that. All right. So what I did was I dragged this out onto the desktop, deleted the code line beginning and ending in constraints. And then I dragged and dropped it back into that same folder. Okay. So it says save the file and close the text editor, which we did. And now manually run the installer by going to C temp NVRTX voice setup.exe. So I just need to go back and here's the setup. So let's go ahead and run that setup now. Now it seems to be going through. So let's agree and continue. It finished installing. Magic. Let's close that. Now the program's going to open. I recommend right clicking RTX Voice and the bottom and just pinning it to your taskbar so it's always here. It's important to select the input device and then you might want to tick, remove background noise from my microphone. It'll take a second to load and then it'll work. When it comes to output device, I don't do anything here. I just leave it. It can remove background noise from incoming audio, which is just, again, mind blowing. But I think this works better with RTX, not GTX. So I just leave this as default device. You can try it out if you like. If it starts to mess around with your audio, then just... Uh, Go back to default and make sure you untick it. Remember that your NVIDIA RTX voice plugin acts as its own microphone, almost like a, a virtual microphone. Even if you close the program, you'll get a message that it's still running. So it's always running and it's always acting as a microphone. What you need to do though, to make sure that it's your default microphone is go to the bottom right of your screen, it, at least in Windows, not sure about a Mac, and right click your little speaker thing and go to open sound settings. And here you want to go to sound control panel. Go to recording. And you want to make sure that it's set as your default device. So here it is. I've identified it, the microphone NVIDIA RTX voice, and it's already my default device. Just right click that and uh, make sure you set as default communication device. You don't want to mute your other microphones. You want them to stay the same. 
but you do want to make sure that whenever you open a program and use it, uh, that the NVIDIA RTX voice is the primary microphone. With that being said, make sure in every program that you use as well, such as Zoom or your classroom software, whatever you're using, make sure that you actually have the NVIDIA RTX voice set as the primary microphone there as well, just in case it remembers your old microphone. And then you're good to go. Now it's time for those all important tests. I'm going to do a typing test with my obnoxiously loud keyboard. We'll do an eating test, even though you should probably mute your microphone if you're going to be eating in a call or in a class. Um, we'll do a dog barking test, so if you have dogs or outside of your window, if there are often dogs barking, let's see if it'll cut that out. And also a crying baby test. So will these noises be completely cut out by RTX voice? Let's see. The first test we're going to do is the typing test. And this is the biggest one for me and definitely the most important one. So I'm just going to open a notepad. Let's drag it over here. And we'll put that there and let's uh, just make sure the font's big enough to read. Okay. And um, we'll open RTX voice and you'll see that currently um, the background removal isn't on there. You can probably hear noises outside, uh, maybe other little things. If I tap on the desk, you could probably hear that. Now I'm just going to type a line. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Little typo there. But I'm uh, clicking and, and typing, clicking and typing, and also typing at the same time, typing at the same time as talking. I'll just say, let's type that again without talking. Okay, so what does this sound like with the background removal thing ticked? So let's uh, just go ahead and tick it. It does sometimes take a moment there to kind of activate, but right now it should be activated. And I'm just going to type the same sentence. The quick brown fox <coughs> jumped over the lazy dog. <coughs> and I'm losing my voice. The quick brown fox. Okay, so um, I'm clicking and typing. Clicking and typing. Um, now I'll type at the same time as talking. Typing, well, I should actually talk when I do it. Typing at the same time as talking. And I'm not sure if you could hear it then. Uh, let's type um, something else. And something else, as I talk, I'll write it, something else, again, without speaking. Okay. So that's pretty crazy. This keyboard is obnoxiously loud. If you don't believe me, I'll turn off background noise removal thing. And I'll type that same sentence again. Absolutely mind blowing. Let's move on to the next test. Okay, so now I'm doing a, a pet test or a barking dog test. On my phone, um, I actually have a video of dogs barking. Let me just turn the volume up to the maximum. Okay. So this is really close to me and um, this might emulate the sound of a dog that's just outside your window or somewhere in your house. And even when I'm not speaking, you can hear it pretty clearly. Okay, so let's turn on the background noise removal. Okay, so they are still barking, and maybe you can hear it a little bit when I'm speaking. Maybe you can hear it a little bit there, but when I'm not speaking, you can't really hear it. So it really, really does cut out that noise. 
Now we have the lovely sound of a crying baby right on my desk here. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on the background removal noise thing. Takes a moment to work, get work in there, and it should be in effect right now. So the baby's still crying. Just as loud as before. And I think that's pretty crazy. Hopefully it cuts that noise out. And I'm actually struggling to talk over the noise of the baby right now. And again, if I just turn it off, you'll see what it sounds like with the background noise removal turned off. So there you go. That's really annoying. And as I'm speaking, you can hear it clearly. If we uh, turn it back on, just takes a minute to process. And now it should be in effect right now. Can you hear the baby crying? Maybe a little bit. Okay, and the last test is a bit of a weird one, but I'm gonna eat some cereal and let's see if you can hear it. It's kind of weird, I'm looking at two cameras at the same time. So this is gonna be gross. This is without background removal, back noise, back, you know what I mean? Okay, horrible, squishy, crunchy noises. Let's turn background removal on and let's try that again. Nice big spoon of cereal. It's just an excuse to have a little, little snack in my day. All right. So, did you hear it the second time? Sorry, I know it's a bit gross. Is your mind blown from this or what? I still don't get it. I don't know how it uses your graphics card to make such an impact when it comes to noise cancellation. It's mad. All of the links that you'll need to set this up yourself are in the description of this video, so check them out. I do recommend reading the official setup guide just in case you get a bit lost or you can comment your questions on this video and uh, I'll try and help you there. This has made a world of difference for me as an online teacher. Right outside my window is a lovely little park and you might be able to hear from the camera microphone, like right now, dogs are often barking, kids are often shouting and screaming. This always happens. These dogs barking, it always happens. And it's been a problem for me for quite a while. Not to mention, again, my obnoxiously loud keyboard and RTX voice completely cuts all of this stuff out. Obviously, it's not on the camera microphone. It's only on, on, on my computer, so you can hear the dogs barking, but not when I'm using my headset or when I'm in a class. I've tried and tested it. My mind continues to be blown. <sighs> See, always happens. Anyway, I just had to share this. I hope it helps you as much as it helped me. Cheers.